I may not be in Coolio's music video for Gangster's Paradise, and I'm not in any biblical way in some sort of hell, but I am in Pennsylvania, in Huntington County, and I am going to take a stroll. So join me as I take a stroll through the shadow of death. I'm gonna see how well this works um, with all the traffic here, but right now I'm standing on US 522 in Huntington County, Pennsylvania. Um, and I'm near a small town of Shade Gap, which is just behind me a little ways here. And uh, this is uh, um, what is known as the shadow of death, uh, according to this weird ominous sign that's behind me here. Now, if you take a look, and I'll, I'll try to get you some pictures of things, but there's two mountains on each side of here. It's actually a really, really large gap, a natural valley between uh, this, this mountain range. And on either side of it, it's very, very tall. And the gap runs east and west, and it makes it very difficult for the sun to get down here. So uh, in between the valley, unless it's high noon, you don't, it's not sunny here. You don't need any kind of uh, sun, uh, sunglasses or anything. Um, but anyway, in, right behind me here, you have a very ominous sign. It says shadow of death on it. Um, <laughs> so um, even the sign, the question is, is, what does it mean? Even the sign doesn't even know. It says at the very bottom, its local significance is now unknown. So what exactly is the shadow of death? So this first was brought to my attention by a friend of mine. He actually lives in central Pennsylvania up towards Lewistown. And he actually comes down here to visit friends and family on occasion. And to get here, the best way is down Route 522 and through the shadow of death. And of course he sees this sign and he's completely confused on what any of it means. <laughs> so he uh, contacted me after he seen I was making these historic videos and he said, hey, he said, why don't you do one on this sign? He said, I don't understand what it means. And uh, he said, it just seems kind of odd that every time I got to come visit my family, I got to pass through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, my friend is a gun enthusiast and you probably, uh, you would hear him in the background uh, on one of my videos where I was actually in um, Northern Pennsylvania shooting a machine gun. And uh, he actually took me up there. But he's a big gun enthusiast, and when he said that he passed through the Valley of the Shadow of Death to visit his family, of course, my question was, well, do you fear, do you fear no evil? And uh, his answer was, if it bleeds, I can kill it. So the sign mentions that this name, Shadow of Death, was applied by uh, travelers of the Frankstown Path, uh, one of them being a man named Conrad Weiser. Um, so I guess the questions that we're going to answer here um, is who is Conrad Weiser? What is the Frankstown Path? And of course, what exactly is the Shadow of Death? So what is the Frankstown Path? Well, the Frankstown Path was also known as the Containing Path, and it was an Indian trail that traveled east to west um, oh, through mountains and over mountains and down through valleys and through gaps. Um, it was uh, a well-known um, Indian trail, actually an ancient one. It actually started at Harris's Ferry, which is modern day Harrisburg, Pennsylvania today. Um, and then it traveled to Frankstown, which is near mo modern day Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. Now Frankstown was an Indian town. Um, it was an old Indian town. It was along the south bank of the Junietta River. Now the Indian name of the town, I am not even going to try to pronounce, but I will put it up for you so you can at least see it. It starts with an A. Um, but it was commonly called Frankstown because of this German trader that used to live there. Now that German trader, his name was Stephen Franks. And so the English always called it Frankstown. Now the path from Frankstown actually traveled uh, even further. It went to the town of Catanning, um, which uh, was also a Lenape uh, Indian town um, and is located at the current location of Catanning, Pennsylvania today. So Conrad Weiser, um, he was actually an Indian agent and an interpreter for the Providence of Pennsylvania. Um, Pennsylvania was a colony of Great Britain in the mid 18th century. So we're talking 1700s, 1730s to the 1750s is when uh, uh, Conrad Weiser operated. So Pennsylvania was a colony of Great Britain at the time. And it was always negotiating with Indians for land and resources. Um, the colony um, also uh, traded lands for uh, with the Indians, they actually acquired land in order to expand uh, the, the province and later on the state, the Commonwealth, further west. 
But after the death of William Penn, who's the founder of Pennsylvania, um, he was known to the Indians as Brother Unos. And uh, the peaceful, after his death, the peaceful transfer and purchase of land actually um, between the Pennsylvanians and Indians uh, became more hostile. Um, in which the Pennsylvania government um, was cheating and stealing land from the natives, uh, as history seems like it co constantly does. Um, but to help with the negotiations um, and peace treaties to maintain some sort of peaceful relationship with these uh, native tribes, uh, the colony needed interpreters, um, and they needed people who was able to negotiate. So that's where Conrad Weiser comes into play. So Conrad Weiser was actually born in Germany in 1696, and he immigrated to uh, New York uh, State, or New York, uh, at that time, the New York Colony, um, with his family as a boy. Now, when he was 16 years old, his father actually agreed to have Conrad to live with the Mohawks uh, for a winter and a spring. And while he was living with the Mohawks, he actually picked up their uh, native customs and their language. And in 1720, Conrad married, and in 1725, he moved his family to Pennsylvania, actually uh, Warmansdorf, Pennsylvania, near Reading, Pennsylvania today. And uh, his homestead, I think, is a museum right now. Um, I drove by it not too long ago, but I didn't go in because it was nighttime. But um, his homestead and his house is actually uh, still at Warmansdorf, uh, Pennsylvania. He started working as an interpreter when an Indian chief who was actually living in Shemokin Village, um, which is now uh, present-day Sunbury, Pennsylvania, um, but that Indian chief asked Conrad Weiser to accompany him uh, to Philadelphia where this chief was going to meet with representatives of the Providence of Pennsylvania. Now, the chief trusted Weiser. And he wanted him to interpret, of course, because he trusted him. And the officials of Pennsylvania were so impressed with Weiser's skills as an interpreter that he, they asked him to continue to interpret for him, or for the, the Providence, which he did for many years, from 1731 to basically till his death in 1760. Some of the negotiating work that he did, um, and here's a list of it for you, uh, he negotiated the deed of, with the Iroquois for the land that was drained by the Delaware River in south of the Blue Mountain in 1736. In 1737, he negotiated a peace between the southern Indian tribes and the Iroquois to avoid a war that neither Virginia or Pennsylvania wanted to have to deal with. In 1744, he was an interpreter for the Treaty of Lancaster, in which he was... Uh, which was an agreement between the Iroquois and the colonies of Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. And then in 1748, Weiser traveled to Logstown, uh, which is modern day Western Pennsylvania near Baton, Pennsylvania, where he represented uh, Pennsylvania in a council of chiefs from 10 tribes in which he successfully made a treaty of friendship between the Lenape, the Shawnee, and the six nations of the Iroquois. Um, it was on this trip that he would have passed through here, through this gap, in the shadow of death. Now this treaty of friendship is actually what prompted the French to redouble their efforts um, in negotiating with the Indians in the Ohio country and of course build forts in the Ohio country which was the aggression that the British government didn't like and what initially started the conflict of the French and Indian War. Now once the French Indian War started to get into full effect, Weiser actually was working with Ben Franklin to establish forts between the Susquehanna and the Delaware rivers. And he was appointed as a Lieutenant Colonel during that war um, and served uh, as uh, part of the provincial forces. Now in 1760, Conrad Weiser, the age of 63, passed away. Uh, the unfortunate part about that is soon after his death, the relations of the, between the Indians and the, and the colony of Pennsylvania began to fall apart. Um, and, of course, another war was created in 1763 called Pontiac's War. So, maybe not directly related to his death, but indirectly, um, the relationships basically fell off with the Indians, and, of course, another war ensued. Now, I haven't found where Conrad Weiser actually referred to the shadow of death, but I imagine there's some paperwork out there where he actually did. What I did find, though, was a report by John Harris. 1754. Now, John Harris was the owner of Harris's Ferry, which is modern-day Harrisburg, and he uh, describes his travels um, along the Frankstown path from his ferry. And uh, the, the description he gives uh, is as follows. 
He says, from my ferry, which again is modern day Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to George Krogan's is five miles. To Kinnatinny Mountain, nine miles. Thomas Mitchell Sleeping Place, three miles. Tuscarora, 14 miles. And then Cove Spring, which is modern Trough Spring, and Tell Township, 10 miles. Then Shadow of Death, which again is Shade Gap, Pennsylvania today, eight miles. And then Black Log, which is near Orbazonia, Pennsylvania, today, three miles. He then continues from Black Log as he traveled past Alwick, which is Sher Shirleysburg, Pennsylvania, today. And then to Jack Armstrong's Narrows, which is the narrow passage cut by the Juniata through Jack's Mountain near Mount Union, Pennsylvania, today, near the trailhead for Thousand Steps Trail. That would take you eight miles, he says, um, from Black Log. And then it's 10 miles to Standing Stone, um, which Standing Stone is a, a monolith, a, a stone that stood 14 feet high and is about six inches square. And it stood somewhere near the intersection of 2nd Street and Allegheny Street in Huntington, Pennsylvania. And then it was 10 miles to the branch of the Juniata, another 10 miles to Big Lick, and then finally five miles to Frankstown. Now, as you can tell, the shadow of death is a gap in the mountain, uh, and I told you it was located in modern-day Huntington County near what is modern-day Shade Gap. I imagine Shade Gap changed their name from shadow of death to Shade Gap because it was uh, a little less uh, uh, ominous, I guess. But, uh, like I said before, the gap is surrounded by tall mountains. Those tall mountains provide a lot of shade, and uh, it is very hard for the sun to get down in uh, this valley unless it is high noon. So only small amounts of the day actually is uh, sunny in this area or in this valley. Um, so the question is, is why is it called the shadow of death? Well, there's multiple things that could be. We don't know for certain, of course, um, but one being this whole phenomenon where the mountains shade the valley, and almost every time that you would pass through this gap on the Frankstown path, it would be shady or dark. And people back in the mid 18th century were very superstitious and did not like to travel at night. Um, that's why there were so many inns along these roads. So you had some place to stay and didn't have to travel at night or in the dark. Now the other thing is this is a very good ambush position. There is no record that I know of of any kind of Indian attack here. But this would be a very good place because of the high ground on either side you can get people in a crossfire and the high amount of traffic that goes through here on the Frankstown path because this is a natural choke point for travelers going east to west and back again. So this would be a very good position for an Indian ambush and also it would be a very good position for an ambush by highwaymen later on in the, in the uh, 1700s and the early 1800s. But there's no evidence that anything like that ever occurred here. So uh, that, that could be a reason, but um, most likely um, it has something to do with the actual shadiness of the valley. But Shade Gap did live up to its pre-revolution name of Shadow of Death uh, later on in the 20th century. In 1966, um, this little town actually made national news when a 17-year-old Peggy Ann Bradnick uh, was kidnapped near Shade Gap by a Mr. William Diller Hollenball. Um, once the state police and, of course, the FBI got involved, it turned into the largest manhunt in U.S. history at that time, resulting in the death of an FBI agent, the death of Hollingball, the kidnapper, and luckily the rescue of the kidnapped Peggy Ann Bradnick. Though this area was known by the name Shadow of Death way before the events of 1966, we can only infer that the meaning of the shadow of death and this ominous sign behind me speaks the truth and its local significance is indeed now unknown.